Sleeping sickness. This parasitic disease is transmitted by the bite of infected tsetse flies in sub-Saharan Africa. The hallmark symptom is, as you can probably guess, sleeping, but not one that you wake up from, but rather one that has the risk of putting you in a potentially irreversible coma if left untreated. Let's say that after a long year you and your family were to book a safari in Africa going through the jungle, and in the heat you don't notice the random tsetse fly biting you. Sure, it's a painful bite, but you've been bitten by annoying bugs before, so you don't pay attention. A few days later your first symptoms would appear as pretty common symptoms of fever, headache, joint pain, and itching at the site of the tsetse fly bite. The parasites move from the initial site of the tsetse fly bite to the bloodstream, eventually penetrating the blood-brain barrier and protecting the brain from harmful substances. Once inside the central nervous system, the parasites cause inflammation and damage to brain tissue, particularly in the regions responsible for regulating sleep patterns. Disrupting the sleep-wake cycle can lead to various sleep disturbances, including excessive daytime sleepiness, insomnia, confusion, and changes in the sleep cycle. If untreated, sleeping sickness can lead to severe neurological damage, coma, and death. You'd be safe from contracting this by avoiding being bitten by tsetse flies, which transmit the disease, wearing protective clothing and using insect repellents, and avoiding entering tsetse fly-infested areas, especially when the flies are most active at night. Marburg Virus Disease Another gift from the Ebola family that keeps giving, and as Ebola's second cousin, it's less well known, but just as deadly. Marburg virus disease is a highly infectious and potentially deadly illness that is recognized almost instantly by its scariest symptom, massive bleeding from every opening in your body. The virus is transmitted through direct contact with infected individuals or animals' bodily fluids, such as blood, saliva, or other secretions. As the disease progresses, things may be pushed into third gear. As the body is overwhelmed by the number of viruses, it throws everything at it and unleashes its last resort, a cytokine storm. Normally, cytokines are produced by the immune system to help fight off infections. However, in a cytokine storm, the immune system goes into overdrive and releases an overwhelming amount of cytokines into the bloodstream. A cytokine storm is essentially the immune system overreacting and damaging the body's cells and tissues instead of fighting off the infection or threat. It's like calling in an excessive amount of reinforcements that end up destroying the city they were trying to protect. The body then begins to bleed massively, both internally and externally. You die from literally both drowning and losing your blood. Since the virus was first identified in 1967, a few dozen outbreaks have been reported, primarily in Africa. The largest outbreak occurred in Angola in 2004 to 2005 with over 200 cases and a mortality rate of around 90%, meaning you'd stand a 9 in 10 chance of dying from this. Nipah Virus Infection The infection of the Nipah virus is a highly dangerous viral disease because of its unique features. Unlike other viruses, its natural host is in fruit bats, which is rare as it shows how viruses easily emerge and spread from animals to humans. Nipah virus, with its high mortality rate ranging from 40% to 75%, makes it one of the deadliest viruses to jump species. Upon your unlucky infection, one of the scariest symptoms you'd most likely develop is encephalitis, a brain inflammation. The virus can cross the blood-brain barrier, a wall protecting your brain, and directly infect the brain tissue. As your brain swells, the extreme pressure caused by the infection causes you to experience severe headaches, drowsiness, disorientation, mental confusion, and altered consciousness. As the condition progresses, you may even fall into a coma. Even if you were lucky enough to get rid of the virus, the damage caused by the virus can often be irreversible. The virus can lead to the destruction of brain cells, causing significant neurological deficits in those who survive the infection. Survivors may suffer from long-term neurological issues including persistent convulsions, personality changes, and reduced brain function. Elephantiasis 
Elephantiasis is a disfiguring disease that shows the extreme lengths some parasites will go to exploit the human body. The root cause of elephantiasis is parasitic worms, which infiltrate the human lymphatic system. If you think these thread-like parasites slithering through one's lymph vessels is unsettling, you will be horrified by what they do. What makes this even more unsettling is how these parasites are transmitted, through mosquito bites. The mosquito is an unwitting delivery vehicle passing microscopic worm larvae into a person's skin during a seemingly innocuous blood meal. Once inside, the worms co-opt and wreak havoc on the vital lymphatic drainage system, a system in the body that carries immune cells over many years. As they grow, mate, and die, their presence triggers a horrific inflammatory response that progressively scars and obstructs the lymph vessels, causing massive lymphatic issues. The signature manifestation is is the most disturbing. The parasite's sabotage of the lymphatics lead to relentless massive swelling of the limbs, genitals, or breasts into huge dimensions due to fluid accumulation. These severe disfigurements give the disease its foreboding name after the swollen thick limbs like an elephant's leg with no exaggeration. Even if treated, victims can be left permanently disfigured with massively swollen, heavy limbs susceptible to repeated infections, leaking of lymph fluids, or inability to use the affected body parts usually ever again. Flesh-Eating Disease True to its name, the flesh-eating disease particularly likes the soft tissues on your skin surrounding important muscles, nerves, and blood vessels because the bacteria release toxins that can destroy tissue and lead to rapid tissue death necrosis. Within a day or two of initial simple symptoms, the infection can start aggressively digesting skin, fat, and muscle tissue at insane rates, sometimes several inches per hour. This explosive spread of necrosis is utterly bizarre. While the infection may enter through even minor cuts, no part of the human body is spared once it takes hold. Necrotizing bacteria can rapidly travel along tissue planes, methodically killing cells and liquefying flesh as they ruthlessly spread up limbs, across torsos, and into vital organs. In a race against time, the only way to stop tissue destruction is through urgent surgery to cut away and remove every last inch of infected and decaying flesh. Often often requiring amputation of limbs, removal of skin, or disfiguring surgeries. Essentially, the body willingly sacrifices part of itself to survive. Even then, the battle isn't over. As bacteria furiously consume body tissue, they release toxins into the bloodstream that can send the body into a fatal spiral of organ failure, fever, low blood pressure, and toxic shock. Hepatitis B the hepatitis B virus, unlike other viruses, is remarkably resilient and can survive outside the body for at least seven days, with viruses like HIV lasting only a few hours. This allows indirect transmission through contact with contaminated surfaces, unlike most viruses that require direct person-to-person -person spread. Its ability to linger in the environment makes it one of the most contagious human viruses. In some cases, hepatitis B establishes a persistent chronic infection that can last decades. The virus can silently attack the liver for years or even a lifetime without causing notable symptoms initially. This invisible, slowly destructive nature makes it highly dangerous compared to acute viral illnesses that at least show symptoms. Hepatitis B has evolved clever ways to hijack the human liver cells and use them as virus factories. It can integrate its genetic material into the host's DNA, indefinitely hijacking the cell's machinery to pump out viral proteins and particles. Perhaps the most exciting aspect is that the virus can form a reservoir by persisting in some people's blood and body fluids for the rest of their lives even without symptoms. These silent carriers can unknowingly spread hepatitis B through mucous membrane exposure. Long-term consequences is what makes hepatitis B so dangerous. Chronic infection significantly increases the risk of eventual liver failure, cirrhosis, and even liver cancer decades down the line due to persistent inflammation and damage to liver cells. However, if vaccinated early enough, you can avoid infection even when exposed. Herpes. 
Herpes is a viral infection caused by the herpes simplex virus, HSV. Perhaps a not-so-fun fact is that it is estimated that almost half of the world's population has oral herpes. This means there's a pretty good bet that one in two people you meet every day has herpes. The good news is that despite being infected, almost all cases are mild cases of occasional flu-like symptoms. Herpes is typically associated with oral herpes, which causes cold sores or fever blisters around the mouth and face. Yes, that's right, the flu that your classmates have once in a while that causes them to get small wounds around their mouth is probably herpes. However, in a few cases where your immune system gets suppressed, the virus can spread from the initial site of infection and circulate throughout the body via the bloodstream. This can lead to herpes lesions erupting over widespread areas of skin. Genital herpes in pregnant women allows the shocking possibility of the virus crossing the placental barrier to infect fetuses, which can result in severe birth defects like blindness, brain damage, or even death for the newborn. While there is no cure for herpes, antiviral medication can help manage symptoms, reduce the frequency and severity of outbreaks, and lower the risk of transmitting the virus to others. Depending on the severity of the infection, these medications are available in oral, topical, and IV forms. Syphilis. It is a sexually transmitted disease that was largely incurable before penicillin and caused extreme disfigurement to many of Europe's royals in the medieval period, including Ivan the Terrible and several Spanish Habsburgs like Juan de Calabazas, whose eroded nose and disfigurement earned him his nickname. Jack of the Gourds. It progressed through stages, each more destructive than the last if left untreated. In the primary stage, a single sore known as a canker develops on the genitals or around the mouth. Other symptoms like fever, swollen lymph nodes, weight loss, and patchy hair loss may occur. This temporary false hope extends to the deadly latent and tertiary stages years or decades later. As the bacteria slowly spreads, soft tumor-like growths form under the skin and on bones. These swell up into thick reddish-brown sores. If they form on the face, the growths eat away at facial bones and tissue, causing parts like the nose or palate to become disfigured or cave in. The syphilis infection also attacks the brain, causing neurological issues like paralysis, seizures, and lack of muscle control. Disfiguring skin lesions that eat away at flesh, leaving visible disfigurements on the face, nose, and other areas. These ulcerations can become smelly and extremely painful. However, luckily enough, upon being diagnosed with it in the early stages, a full course of antibiotics should clear it from your body for good. Meningitis. Your spine and brain are among the few sterile places, meaning they're free from bacteria, viruses, or fungi, good or bad, and protected by a tough layer called meninges. Should anything ever enter this space, your body will immediately enter an overdrive and cause meningitis. Unlike many infections that develop gradually, meningitis can emerge suddenly and escalate with frightening speed. Meningitis progresses so rapidly because the infection directly attacks the special machinery of the central nervous system. As the protective membranes become inflamed, functions controlled by the brain and spinal cord can begin to misfire in unpredictable ways, leading to weird neurological symptoms like very severe headaches, seizures, hallucinations, and even coma. If not treated promptly with antibiotics or antivirals, the unchecked inflammation can cause lasting brain damage, neurological disabilities, or death. The causative bacteria or viruses are often harmlessly carried in people's nasal passages and throats, only to be unwittingly passed through something as simple as breathing the same air as an infected person. Its stealth transmission allows it to hurry through populations. It mimics symptoms of milder viral illnesses like the flu, delaying diagnosis until more distinctive signs appear. By then, critical time has been lost to get ahead of the rapidly escalating brain and spinal cord inflammation. Thank you.